One of the biggest mysteries in hip hop history may finally have some answers. It's Friday, August 21st, and this is the current music news. I'm Jade. And I'm Jay. Ronald Washington and Carl Jordan Jr. have been charged with the 2002 murder of Jam Master Jay, hip hop legend who is the DJ in Run DMC. Why are these charges only being filed now in 2020? Why has this crime taken so long to crack? Today, we're gonna to do our best to explain. A grand jury returned an indictment uh, here in the Eastern District of New York, charging uh, two defendants, Carl Jordan Jr. and Ronald Washington, for their involvement in the murder of Jason Mizell, uh, who I think you all know uh, was known as uh, Jam Master J and, and part of the group Run DMC. All right, so first of all, let's just start with Run DMC 101 for those of us who aren't totally caught up on our 80s hip hop. So Run DMC, they're a trio. They're from Queens, New York. They got started in 1983. Uh, there is Joseph Simmons, a.k.a. Rev Run. There's Daryl McDaniels, a.k.a. DMC. Those are the rappers. And then there is Jason Mazel, a.k.a. Jam Master J. And he was their DJ. With their streetwise image and booming sound, Run DMC were crucial artists who moved hip hop beyond its disco twined 70s roots and helped pave the way for the genre to become one of the biggest sounds in popular music. Run DMC's peak years were in the second half of the 80s with hits like You Be Illin, It's Tricky, and the game changing Aerosmith collaboration Walk This Way. <laughs> Jam Master J was crucial not only to the sound of Run DMC, but also to their style. Uh, so think of Run DMC in your mind, right? That black fedora, the track jacket, and of course, my Adidas. You can't leave those out. That was Jam Master J's style, and it became Run DMC's band uniform. And then in 1989, when the band was a little bit less active, uh, he decided that he wanted to start Jam Master J Records, and they signed, signed artists like uh, 50 Cent and Onyx. And he also founded the Scratch DJ Academy to teach DJ techniques to the next generation. Jam Master J was shot to death on October 30th, 2002, in a recording studio in Queens. It was his recording studio, established right there in the neighborhood where he grew up. There were witnesses, including a colleague who took a bullet himself and an office manager who was apparently held at gunpoint by an accomplice to the murderer. There were security cameras, but police found the recording had been stolen or disabled. In other words, to some degree, it was an inside job. So who would want to kill hip hop legend Jam Master J? Fans and a lot of close personal friends didn't believe there were any criminal activities in Jam Master J's past. So a lot of conspiracies started, including one uh, that he had got kind of caught up in 50 Cent's life, you know, sort of inside some beef between 50 Cent and some dangerous people from his past. Uh, but there was really no evidence for that. Year after year went by, and the case remained open. To a lot of the DJ's friends, family, and fans, it looked like an example of what a low priority the NYPD put on solving the murder of a black victim from the hip hop world. The fact that someone as Famous and beloved as Jam Master Jay could be murdered in cold blood in front of witnesses in the middle of a busy city, and the case could remain open for nearly two decades, looked like evidence that the police just weren't making it that high a priority. As the years went by, more and more information about the story circulated. And it turns out, well, in fact, yes, Jam Master Jay did have some illegal activity with drug deals. 
And he was also really generous. He would give away money to whoever told him that they needed it, which left his estate deeply in debt. A documentary about the case came out on Netflix in 2018. And in the end, the filmmaker came up with two names, Ronald Washington and Carl Jordan Jr. Both were known to the artist. Both of them would have had access to the studio to be able to disable the cameras, and they were well known enough to be able to be buzzed in. It's a lot of mystery. We had 50, 60 different tips. Hypothetical. The security cameras had been tampered with. The police didn't seem to have any substantial evidence. According to the charges, the motive involved a cocaine deal gone wrong. Due to some kind of dispute that may or may not ever be fully understood, the suspects allegedly thought that they were being cut out of the deal. Prosecutors say that Ronald Washington forced another person, seemingly the office manager, to the floor while Carl Jordan Jr. shot Jam Master J. The suspects have pleaded not guilty. Jason Mazel's mother, who was interviewed for the Netflix documentary, uh, didn't live to see this day. She died last year. But Jam Master J's son, Jesse Mazel, who spoke on behalf of the family, said, Upon hearing this news, we have mixed emotions. We truly hope that these indictments are a stolid step towards justice being served in the murder of Jay. In spite of all the tragedies we've seen this year alone, we take comfort in our family, our faith, and in time's ability to heal all. We can only hope that this news brings awareness to the fact that black lives do matter. That's today's music news. In tribute to Jam Master Jay, we'll leave you with a clip from the DJ at his peak, warming up a 1984 crowd for a performance by Run DMC. Now scream! Oh yeah, party people in the place! One, two, three in the place to be! My name is Jam Master Jay, and this fellow in front of me is DMC. We got a cold rock the house for y'all. If y'all want my man running, come out so we can start the show. Somebody say run! Say run! Okay, I want everybody to do this. Clap your hands, everybody. And everybody, clap your hands. See the people in the back. Clap your hands. Let me hear everybody. Clap your hands. Here we go. Say the wheel, run, GMC and Jam Master Jay.